I do feel that my background of playing, still being able to get out there, you know, a young 39 year old in my mind, um, really helps. I think it's always great when you can demonstrate certain things to guys, and but also relate and joke and, and invest that. I've always believed player development is both on and off the court. It's 365 days a year, and you're arguably building, building relationships with these guys so they trust you. I'm Adam Harrington with the Brooklyn Nets. I'm originally from Burnson, Massachusetts, which is a small town um, in the western part of the state, about like right on the border of Vermont. I remember playing in Brattleboro, Vermont, which is the neighboring town to Burnson, Massachusetts, and in, in this little junior pro league. Um, and uh, I'll never forget the team. The team was Pepsi, Pepsi, Pepsi Company, um, and it was my first basketball experience. And then I, I kind of played in that league for three years, then got into the one in Massachusetts, and kind of just springboarded from there. I think even then, I, I was just obsessive compulsive. So. It was one of those sports that you, all you needed was a basketball. So I literally dribbled it around everywhere I went. I'll never forget, you know, as, even as I got older, you know, shooting in the house or passing off the wall. And I used to always tell my mom, like I broke a light one time. And I said, mom, you know, no worries. When I make it to the NBA, I'll buy you as many lights as you want. I obviously played high school, college professionally for nine years. And uh, so it's been really my whole life. I have an older sister um, and a younger brother. Dad was from Boston. He played at UMass with Dr. J. I kind of got the basketball side from, from my dad. My mom was from even further west from the Berkshires in Massachusetts. My younger brother was an uh, incredible athlete as well, probably more athletic than I was. He will tell you he didn't have the competitiveness or the tenacity that I had. My older sister played basketball and uh, she's obviously a big part of my story and journey anyways, but we were super close. She ended up going to play at York College, but she joked as like, as the season went on, she literally was moving further down the bench to where she was actually like holding the towels. And so she came back to UMass and to study sports management and kind of finished my senior year. And um, obviously I went on to play in college and then she came to live with me at Auburn. And then when I played with the Mavericks, she uh, came to work for Mark Cuban and lived with me as well. And then um, I went on in my professional career, she stayed there, ended up working for the NBA offices. And so, um, and then in 2010, she passed away. And that kind of really is my coaching journey. When she passed, I, I stopped playing basketball in 2010. I was playing overseas in Poland and my heart had kind of shifted to making a difference. So I started a foundation called, you know, this the JEHH Memorial Fund. And it's a really crazy story, but she was eight and a half months pregnant too and they lost a baby boy. His name was Chase. So we kind of adapted this chase your dreams now kind of thing. And really, I was just reminded that obviously I was able to play in the NBA. So I made a dream come true. Small guy from a small town. Nobody thought he could do it. And my sister was a massive part of it. And that can be from financially buying me something at Auburn when I had no money at, in college or a words of encouragement and all these times that she would talk to me about you can do this and you get those goosebump feelings and so that's really the basis of the foundation is how do we create these for so many people so we do a bunch, bunch of different things for people chasing their dreams so I think that was the biggest thing is that I always remember her positivity and humor and we literally looked alike and it's something that I, I've missed since the journey but it's something that we help we try to provide for so many other people now. So I stopped playing in 2010, started training kids for $10 an hour, like something back in my hometown. And I, I coached a summer league team of guys that I had been training and we won a championship there. And then I took a job at, there's a prep school in our area called North Vermont Herman. And uh, I took the JV job there for like a $4,500 stipend. I, I'll never forget, it was a really cool experience. It's like the first time you, you, you lead a mini culture and you're the guy that gets to say things and um, be positive or be tough. And fast forward, now I'm head coach of Summer League, so it's really unique, but I'll always remember that. And when I share my journey, I always tell people like, yeah, I coached the Summer League team and I, you know, they look at me coaching the Brooklyn Nets, but, and I coached a JV prep school team. And so, yeah, those are kind of my first two real coaching jobs. My first NBA coaching job was with the Oklahoma City and Scotty Brooks. It's somebody that uh, I literally, to this day, so grateful and thankful for the opportunity he got. So I kind of came in as a shooting coach, but he made a spot for me on behind the bench, invited me in every meeting and I kind of, Something I had missed when I played was the, you know, the competition and the camaraderie. And all of a sudden I had it again. Because before I was an individual skills trainer and had MBA guys to college guys to eighth grade middle school girls. So I really owe the coaching thing and I was skeptical of it at first. You know, I had been my own boss, my own trainer and doing very well, but um, so I'm always thankful for the opportunity Scott again. He kind of gave me that itch and desire that like, I really like this, I could do this. And uh, you know, fast forward, I'm going into my fourth year in Brooklyn and and an assistant coach and, and just an incredible opportunity. So I have four kids with my wife. Jaden is 12, Jackson is seven, Jonah's five, 
And to really wrap the whole story back together, my little daughter is two and her name's Jill after my sister. But just incredible. My wife is amazing, stay at home mom. I've been so fortunate. I think coaches' wives are the most important people in their lives because it's such a sporadic thing and she loves the journey. I think she likes it more than I do sometimes. I'll never forget, she loves when I have short road trips because she feels like she can get organized. She feels like she's not making another dinner that's because I'm on some vegan health clean thing and then the next night I want a cheeseburger. We've been through uh, obviously a lot. She's been along the journey for a long time and uh, you know when I stopped playing there was a lot to figure out. When I was a coach at the prep school team, I was doing medical sales for six months and I was gone all the time. And you know, we're like, all of a sudden, what are we gonna do for money? And we just put a lot into this foundation. And so she's been through a lot of fires, but we laugh a lot now and we still have challenges, but it's really exciting. And we found an incredible home in Brooklyn right now. And, and we just adopted the philosophy that wherever we are, that's home. We've always tried to rule our spirit with that and be like, we're, we're gonna make the best of this situation. And we know in this business, it can change quickly one way or the other. I didn't start in a video room. I didn't have long hours of internships. And so I'm always thankful and grateful for, for, for my opportunity. But at the end of the day, you get to teach basketball at the highest level with the greatest players in the world. So what else more could you ask for? We keep talking about what makes us special or our creativity. It's like we are able to work with these incredible athletes. I love doing things in the summer that kind of bring me back to my roots and working with young, young people. I'll never forget, I did a middle school eighth grade girl who couldn't dribble, you know, and I've always said, I think I was um, preparing myself for the journey by honoring what was in front of me, you know, and I'll never forget, like I was preparing myself to years later be training Alina Deladon, who's in the WNBA. And I think we often look for the, everybody wants to coach in the NBA, everybody wants to coach in the WNBA, everybody wants to coach at a Division One college, and you should have those things, but it's all those steps to be really preparing yourself for. And I'm thankful I had people in my life that were constantly reminded me of that, like you're preparing yourself for what's, what the future holds.